Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to very interesting game from London 1922 uh, and we have Alexander Aliehin. Uh, he is at that time number two in the world and according to the chess metrics he's ranking 2746 and just five years later uh, he's gonna become the world champion uh, beating Jose Raul Capablanca but for now he's just number two in the world and he's 29 years old and he gonna play as white and his opponent Fred the worst Yates and he's ranking 2510 he's already 38 years old at that time and who was Mr. Yates you would ask uh, actually he was quite strong British master because he won the British championship uh, six times in his career and he also won the games against Lasker against Capoblanca, uh, also against Aliochin. So a definitely strong player, but very, very unstable, uh, mostly due to the, his health problems. Okay, uh, But without further ado, let's jump into this interesting game. So we have d4 by uh, Aliechin, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight on c3, bishop e7 bishop g5 um, castle and now e3 knight b on d7 of course this is queen's gambit declines everybody knows that and uh, this configuration was played thousands of times in the top level so everybody should be familiar with we have rook on c1 c6 and now queen on c2 so uh, white don't play the bishop yet uh, white is waiting Okay, white is waiting for uh, d takes on c4 and then white can, you know, um, develop the bishop with tempo actually. Uh, but black don't want to do that also. So black is also waiting. We have rook on e8 uh, and Aliehin can play a3 now which which is uh, of course the most popular move in the 21st century however Aliehin didn't want to wait longer and he played bishop on d3 we have d takes on c4 as planned b takes on c4 and now knight on d5 so now this bishop is under attack is attacked twice by the queen and the bishop so a white have to do something about that and the most popular line nowadays would be bishop takes on e7 and after queen on e7 castle exchanging um, the knights on c3 the position would be totally equal and both sides can enjoy the game uh, however, Aliehin play knight on e4, defending the bishop. So bishop is defended twice. And this move is not played uh, anymore nowadays uh, because of the, the problem with queen on a5. And now white don't have actually good moves. So for example, queen on d2, bishop b4. Uh, and now knight have to go back to c3 bishop takes on c3 b takes on c3 and now e5 challenging white center and black is totally great here the position is uh, very much playable and uh, black can actually enjoy the game uh, of course king on f1 can be played after the check so king on f1 and uh, in similar fashion black even can avoid the exchanging the dark square bishop which is pretty good so bishop on f8 and then bishop h4 and e5 challenging the center as well and black is totally fine here however yates after knight on e4 uh, didn't go for queen on a5 he didn't know the theory as good as we know now uh, he played f5 but f5 is so bad move and uh, it's totally anti-positional so you can learn from this game quite a lot what will happen if you play such a move like f5 and I'm not sure what was behind this move, what idea was behind this move. So uh, Mr. Yates, I don't know, maybe he tried to create the stone wall with the hole uh, in d5. That's uh, pretty unusual. And uh, what we know, 
he create the weakness so e5 is gonna be very difficult to defend it can't be attacked by the pawn because there is no pawn on the d7 and there is no pawn uh, on f7 okay so it's impossible to attack um, e5 so that's gonna be a weakness for sure uh, we have bishop on e7 so exchanging the bishops queen on e7 and knight retreat on d2 so not on c3 because uh, black would just exchange the knights and white for now don't want to exchange the pieces uh, especially if it doesn't give any advantage and here we have another very weak move by Yates. He played b5. So again, he put all his pieces on the white squares uh, and his bishop is also on the white square. So this bishop, it's, it's almost impossible to develop it correctly. So that's gonna be a problem. And also look at these weaknesses. These guys uh, can't actually challenge by playing something like c5 or e5. So usually in the queen's uh, gambit decline, the idea is to challenge uh, the d4 pawn. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, Aliehin uh, exchanged the bishop for the knight. He thought, okay, this bishop is not worth the same like a knight. Knight in this close position is um, much better here. And he has very nice idea here. So uh, b takes on d5. And now uh, the pawn on c6 is hanging. So c takes on d5 and for the moment uh, black actually have this uh, stone wall we have castle by uh, Aliehin and now a5 uh, probably trying to develop the bishop this way uh, however it gives white the opportunity to exchange this knight this knight is the last piece which try to control e5 so we have knight on b3 very nice plan already you see what's going on a4 and now knight on c5 it actually forces the exchange uh, and get white into the much much better end game uh, if black now try something like b4 a queen on d2 bishop a6 as planned then white simply can move the rook uh, exchange the knights and then jump on the e5 but also uh, can play something like knight on a6 rook a6 and now rook c7 and controlling the c file uh, queen d6 now rook fc1 and everything is it is a total domination by white so black actually don't have much choice so knight takes on c5 uh, was played queen on c5 queen on c5 yates probably told okay if i exchange the queens uh, maybe i can draw somehow we have rook on c5 and now b4 rook f on c1 so now white dominates the uh, c file now bishop on a6 and now knight e5 this is dream for every knight this knight can't be removed from there okay no pawns can attack him no minor pieces can attack him so really really strong piece on e5 and of course controlling the c file so now it's just a matter of technique to win this game uh, and black has nothing to play so we have rook e on b8 and now f3 f3 the idea is to start to move the king so now king can enter the game okay so now what white want to do is improve the position of all pieces and then bring the last piece the king this is the idea of this game we have b3 so white have to react somehow a3 now we have h6 king f2 as planned king h7 and now h4 so the queen side is locked already and alihin want to also lock the king side and win in the center or rather on the seven rank as the rooks can be uh, double on the seven rank uh, we have rook on f8 so still waiting king on g3 rook f on b8 now rook on c7 taking a better position now bishop b5 rook from the first rank to uh, c5 we have bishop on a6 rook continue to c6 rook e8 and now king f4 
Uh, and here black could try something like bishop on b5, but it actually doesn't work. It's quite nice idea of counterplay, but it just doesn't work because the king is already very advanced. So for example, rook on b6 and now rook a on b8, rook c on b7. And yes, black can achieve the exchange of the rooks. And now bishop on f1, g3, rook c8. So trying to do some counterplay, but it's not enough. Knight on d7. Now a knight on f6 is some kind of threat. Rook on c2, knight on f6, king g6, and now knight e8. And already threatening a checkmate here, uh, because after king moved to h5, we would have a checkmate. Okay, uh, so black would have to play something like h5, then king e5 is winning the game and black don't have a good move, uh, would have to defend uh, e6, but it's, uh, but it's just pathetic. So uh, if try to take on b2, then actually is forced checkmate in eight moves. So for example, rook on g7, king h6. King f6 and you see already the checkmate. So a bishop have to go back to b5. Now knight on d6 uh, threatening a checkmate. So uh, bishop on e8 defending. And now uh, rook on g8. There are a couple of ways of, of checkmating here. Bishop on g6, rook h8 and now bishop h7 and knight f7 checkmate. So it doesn't really work. Any counterplay means that black not gonna have enough pieces to defend. So this is why we have king on g8, h5, locking the king side as well. And now bishop on f1, g3. Bishop goes back to a6 and now rook on f7. So preparing to double the rooks on the 7th rank. We have king on h7, rook c on c7, rook g8, defending this g7. And now this knight is already bored on e5. So the knight moves on d7. And now the threat is obvious, winning the exchange. Uh, and now we have king on h8, avoiding that. And now feel free to pause the video and find the final sequence for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So uh, definitely you need some creativity and uh, try to think a slightly different way. So knight on f6 is quite obvious. Uh, now attacking the rook uh, and if knight is taken, then of course we would have a checkmate. So rook g on f8. Uh, it looks like pretty sneaky move because now if white takes on g7, then actually black can take the knight on f6. So what to play as white now? So Aliehin play rook on g7 anyway. So he sacrificed uh, this knight, rook on f6. And now the move you have to find, king e5, king e5 attacking the rook. And now if rook move to f8, or this rook uh, come to defend, doesn't really matter. We would have a checkmate here. So uh, that's of course impossible to play. The king has nowhere to go. Uh, and if something like rook on c8, challenging the rook also doesn't work because rook h7, king g8, rook from c to g7 with check, king f8, and only now king f6. And now, uh, Rook on h8 is coming, so checkmate in one move. So it really doesn't matter what black play, we have a checkmate. So this is why after king on e5, uh, Fred the worst, uh, Yates resign the game. And I think uh, 70 years later, Nigel Short got inspired by this game and he made his his walk and created the masterpiece by walking the king you know and uh, to checkmate his opponent Jan Timan in 1991 a very interesting game if you haven't seen it yet 
check over there. I really recommend it's a lot to learn from that game. And also I hope you understand this game, uh, what not to play in Queen's Gambit declined, you know? Don't make anti-positional move, don't make your dark squares uh, weak, okay? So I hope uh, you learned something from this game and if you like this video, press a like. If for some reason you don't like this game, a press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other very important games in chess history, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.